Today is day three of Towards Better Golf. Yesterday, uh, day two, was about transferring the weight and day one was about the whole idea of taking a shorter backswing. Today, I've just been doing the reps, etc. But I was reminded while I was practicing of a particular book by John Updike and this particular book, Golf Dreams. And he writes on page 149. And the bliss of the swing, the one that feels effortless and produces a shot of miraculous straightness and soar. I'll take it, we say modestly, searching about with the demure blush for the spun away tea. Just a few shots around keep us coming back. What other sport offers such sudden splendour in exchange for so few calories of expended energy? In those instants of whiz, ascent, hover and fall, an ideal self seems mirrored. If we have that one shot in us, we must have thousands more. The problem is to get them out and let them out. To concentrate, to take one's time, to move the weight across, day two, to keep the elbow in, to save the wrist cock for the hitting area and to keep one's head still down. As if full of serenity, as a Zen monk's, an ambitious program, but a basically spiritual one, which does not require the muscularity and shapeliness of youth. What other sports hold out hope of improvement to a man or woman over 50. True, the pros begin to falter around 40, but it is their putting nerves that go, not their swings. For a duffer, the room for improvement is so vast that three lifetimes could be spent roaming the fairways, carving away at it, convinced that perfection lies just over the next rise. And that hope, perhaps, is the kindest bliss of all that golf bestows upon its devotees. Day three. Just a few thoughts.